Now, anytime we talk about a function, we can talk about its domain. Okay? Uh, you probably, hopefully, heard that word before. You may not remember what it's referring to, but the domain is always referring to x values. Okay? The domain is always referring to the x values. So I don't know if you want to write this on your graph where you see the word domain, if you want to write it on your other sheet of paper where you write the learning target. That's kind of a few, but you need to write it down somewhere. The domain is referring to the x values. So it means if I plug in a number, am I going to get out an answer? Well, for a quadratic equation like this, we can plug in any number that we want to for x. You can square any number, positive, negative, zero. You can square any number. You can multiply it by negative 2. You're going to get an answer. And then you can subtract 2 times that number and add 12. You're always going to get an answer. So the domain of any quadratic function, or really in general polynomial function, which is where we're going after quadratics, is all real numbers. That's the symbol for all real numbers. You can write it out if you'd rather. Okay, that means all real numbers. It's like an R with an extra back on it. Um, there's also what we call interval notation. So you can put a set of parentheses and you can put negative infinity to positive infinity. So that what that means, it looks like a point. It's not a point. It's what we call interval notation. That means my x values can go from negative infinity, so the biggest negative number I can imagine, to positive infinity, the biggest positive number that I can imagine. I can plug those numbers into my equation and I'm going to get an answer out. We'll look at some functions later on this semester where the domain is not all real numbers. But for right now, it's going to be all real numbers. Okay. <clears throat> now let's talk about what we call the axis of symmetry. Hopefully you've heard of this before. Maybe you need just a little refresher on it. I have the equation there on your paper to find the axis of symmetry by hand. The axis of symmetry refers to a vertical line. Okay, parabolas are symmetric. If you uh, draw a line right down the middle of it right here, then you could fold it in half and it's going to be symmetric. Now notice that line is not the y-axis. Sometimes it is, but for this one it's not. Um, so the axis of symmetry is x equals negative b over 2a. Now if you recall, the a and b refer to parts of this equation. The a is the coefficient in front of the x squared, the b is the coefficient in front of the x, and the c is the constant on the end. ax squared plus bx plus c is the general form of a quadratic. <clears throat> so that means specific to this problem, our axis of symmetry is going to be, negative b just means you change the sign. So right now, b is negative 2. So we're going to change the sign and it's going to become positive 2 over 2 times a. a for this one is also negative 2. So we've got 2 over negative 4, which is equal to negative 1 half. We don't leave a negative in the denominator. So that negative sign, we're just going to slide it up to the numerator. So the axis of symmetry is x is equal to negative 1 half, and that's where I drew it right there. Negative 1 half, vertical line. If you're going to draw it into your graph, then you, you draw a dotted line. Okay. Now, the vertex is going to be on the axis of symmetry. So that means that the x-coordinate of the vertex is negative 1 half. The vertex is always on the axis of symmetry, so its x-coordinate is always the same as the axis of symmetry. But we need the y. Well, we have the equation. All we have to do is plug negative one-half into our equation to see what we get. Now, our table doesn't have negative one-half on it. It goes by whole numbers. So we just need to go to our <coughs> regular old home screen and type in our equation. Now, you got to be careful with this. Any time you square a number, you have to put it in parentheses. Okay, you have to put it in parentheses or it's not going to turn out right. And really, any time you're, you're dealing with a fraction, you should always put that fraction in parentheses as well. Okay, so I'm just typing that in. You press enter, 
personally, I prefer fractions. 12.5 is okay, but since my x coordinate is a fraction, then I'm going to write my y coordinate as a fraction. Okay, 25 over 2. But obviously, if you're graphing that, 25 over 2, or well, where do I put that? The decimal is more helpful. You know where 12.5 is. Okay, so that's the vertex. Now, is this vertex a maximum or a minimum point? A maximum, okay? It hits a peak, it's a maximum value, and then it starts decreasing again. So this one is a maximum. Now, we talked about the domain at the very beginning. Let's talk about the range. Okay, now the range is not all real numbers because the range talks about our y values. Okay, the range is the y values. So the question is, what y values am I going to hit with this function? Is there a limit to the y value that I will hit? Well, this is why I did this right after the vertex, identifying whether it was a maximum or a minimum. You look at this function, it starts increasing, then it hits a maximum of 12.5, and it starts decreasing again. So this function is never going to be above 12.5. So the range for this function is that your y values, y is less than or equal to 12.5. That's the maximum that it will hit. Um, if you want to write it in interval notation, then it would be from negative infinity, because our function continues decreasing, to 12.5. And we actually put a bracket at the end instead of a parentheses. We put a square bracket. That means that 12.5 is included. Okay, 12.5 is included. We can actually achieve that value. That kind of uh, corresponds to the equal to here. <clears throat> um, honestly, I don't know that you'll have to deal with interval notation. I don't know whether it shows up on the final exam or not. So I was just trying to show you both ways. I'm fine with you writing it like this, but I do want you, I don't want you to be surprised if you ever see interval notation. Okay? All right, now, um, there on your paper, I have um, a place for increasing and decreasing. Now, I just talked about this. I said our function starts by increasing. This side is increasing and this side is decreasing. So if you're going to identify where we are increasing, we talk about the x values. Okay? We're talking about the y values are the ones that are actually increasing, but we use the x values to identify it. So this is increasing from negative infinity until we get to our vertex, negative one half. Okay, that's talking about the left side of our function. From negative infinity to negative one half, our y values are increasing, but we're using the x values to identify them. It is decreasing from negative one half to positive infinity. Yes, the y values are going to negative infinity. This tends to confuse people a little bit. Yes, the y values are going to negative infinity, but we're using the x values to describe where it's happening. So from here all the way to the right, our y values are going down, but we're talking about it going from left to right. So you've got to get from negative infinity to positive infinity with these numbers. Okay. Again, this is one of those things I'm not really sure that they're going to test you on, but I did want to mention it just in case they do. Okay. All right. Let's talk really quickly about the intercepts. Okay. But before we before we do that, let's put this in factored form. All right. Let's put this in factored form. <clears throat> so when we're factoring, we always want to try by taking out a GCF first. So if we look at this, all of these are divisible by 2, and if that leading coefficient is negative, we want to take out a negative 2. So we're going to factor out a negative 2 first, 
So we're left with x squared plus x, because we took out the negative 2, minus 6. When you're factoring on a GCF, if you need to, you can always just divide on your calculator to see what should be left inside the parentheses. And then we can factor that trinomial. That would be x times x and positive 3 and negative 2. Okay, positive 3 times negative 2 gives you negative 6. Positive 3 minus 2 gives us positive 1. So that is factored form. Now if you recall, back to math 1 and even math 2, the purpose of factoring was so that we could find the x-intercepts or what we call the zeros. So when we have it in factored form, we set our factors equal to zero, and that will give us our x-intercepts. We solve them for x. For the first one, we need to subtract three. For the second one, we need to add two. That gives us our x-intercepts. Now, you already saw those in your table, but I want to show you where it comes from from the equation. Okay, and finally, let's talk about the y-intercept, okay? If we are on the y-axis, our x is equal to zero. So that means that we just need to plug zero into our equation, and that will give us our y-intercept. Well, guess what? It's always going to end up being that constant on the end. Our y-intercept is always the constant on the end, and I forgot to do this with the x-intercept, but technically it's a point. Okay, so you need to write it. The x-coordinate is 0, the y-coordinate is 12. We should also write our x-intercepts similarly. They are points, so we need to write those as negative 3, 0, and 2, 0. The y-coordinates are 0. They're on the x-axis, so the y-coordinate is 0. Now, I showed you how to do all this by hand. Okay, I showed you how to do all this by hand. But the reality is, uh, you always have your calculator at your disposal. Okay, you always have your calculator at your disposal. Um, so let's look at uh, the example on the back of the page. And we're going to do it just from the calculator perspective. Okay? So I put a table on there. We're not going to go through the process of, of filling in the table. Um, but... Uh, let's kind of walk through this more from the calculator perspective, okay? Um, the domain of this function, I told you, it's always all real numbers, okay? It's always all real numbers. The range is the only thing that you have to worry about differing, okay? The range is the only thing you have to worry about differing. <clears throat> so, for the axis of symmetry, it's related to the vertex. So if we plug this in, and I want you to kind of follow along in your calculator. So go ahead and plug this equation in. 